All right. So now we are doing question number one, part C, August 2024, question one, cow. Question one, cow. This was really an easy question. I can't even understand why students are not able to interpret it very well. I mean, this was a straightforward question, the easiest of them all. But again, I can't blame any student because I know students get, in this case here, anxiety attacks during exams, which is very, very unfortunate. I'll be able to tell you what uh, not to do or what to do so that those attacks will never attack you at the wrong time. So we are told here Mavuno, Bora Limited, is an agro-based company incorporated in Kenya. The company intends to invest in a capital project which will be based in Cape Town, South Africa, where they use the RAND, S-Z-A-R. The project will commence on 1st January 2025 with the initial capital of 5 million South African RANDs, that, which will be used in acquiring agricultural machinery with an estimated useful life of five years with a salvage value of zero. The straight line method of depreciation will be applied. To enable the firm pay land rates and other working capital requirements, an additional 2.5 million uh, South African rands will be required, and it is expected that this amount will be recouped in full at the end of the project's useful life. Annual sales revenue from the project is given like that. Variable operating costs are expected to be 20% of the sales and are assumed to accrue evenly. The exchange rates have been given. All the cash flows are expected to occur at the end of the year. The cost of capital for both South Africa and Kenya is assumed to be 12% per annum, 8. Assume that the corporation tax rate in South Africa is 30% and no further taxation will be levied in Kenya. So they want us to give them the net present value of the project in Kenya shillings. Based on your results in C1 above, advise the management of Mavuno Bora Limited on the appropriate course of action. In the normal class, I gave you the format you should be able to use. Whenever the examiner tells you to generate cash flows, first of all, I gave you the format you're supposed to be using. I gave you the format you're supposed to be using. I gave you the format that you're supposed to be using. So the format looks like this. To get cash flows. So we have your PBDT. Uh -huh. You will come and less tax without adjusting for depreciation first of all. You less tax automatically. And then you add back, you add back depreciation tax shield to get what we call operational cash flows. To get what we call operational cash flows. To get what we call operational cash flows like that. Operational cash flows. Yeah. Operational cash flows. To get what we call operational cash flows. To get what we call operational cash flows. All right. So whenever you see the examiner giving you like sales, variable costs, fixed cost, ETC, at the end of the day, we don't discount revenues. At the end of the day, we shall work with cash flows. And how do we generate them? This is the approach I would want you guys to be taking. We take profit before the premium tax, the figure given, or the one that you derive. You less tax, add back the premium tax shield, and then you get what we call operational cash flows. All right. So if I'm the one doing this exam, if I were lucky to be in your exam room, in your exam room, in this case here, doing this question, the first thing that I will be able to ask myself is, do we have taxation? Yes, you can see tax is 30%. Tax is 30%. So whenever tax is given, then automatically depreciation becomes relevant. Automatically, depreciation becomes what you are relevant. Whenever you see tax, you shall always calculate depreciation. So then depreciation, they have told me to use straight line method. Depreciation will be equal to initial cost Initial cost minus any scrap value, which they haven't given us, divided by number of what year, number of years. So somebody may not be able to see this very well. Remember this is, write this in full. 
This is depreciation tax shield. Eh? This is depreciation tax shield. Depreciation tax shield. And then, of course, these are number of years. Number of years. So these great people, they have given me, they have given me, what have they given me, these great people? They have given me, they have given me, they have given me the initial cost of the machine. They have given me the initial cost of the machine. So initial cost of the machine is 5,000. I'll cut three zeros there. Eh? I want to cut three zeros for simplicity. So the initial cost is five. You can see first January 2025 with the initial capital of 5 million South African rands, which will be used in acquiring agricultural machinery with an estimated useful life of five years with a, a zero salvage value. So then the initial cost will become, in this case here, 5,000. Minus scrap value, which is zero. Number of years, they have told us they are five. Let me ask you a question. What if there was a, an installation cost of 1,000? If there was an installation cost to install this machinery, an installation cost of 1,000, then what do you think would have uh, the initial cost be? What would uh, our initial cost uh, be in? Yeah, you add it to initial outlay. You add the 1K, would have added the 1K here. But here there is no installation cost. 5,000 minus zero divided by five, which gives us 1,000, which gives us 1,000. And therefore, depreciation tax shield will be 1,000 times the rate of tax, 30%, which gives us 300. This is normally a free mark. This is normally a free mark. Normally, this is a free mark. This is a free mark. 300. Why have I computed depreciation? I've computed depreciation simply because tax has been given and I will be able to get what we call the depreciation tax shield. Otherwise, if this tax is not provided, then my DTS will be zero. My DTS will be zero. Assuming in this case, the tax rate is zero then DTS will be zero, meaning that this would not have been really a worthwhile, would not have been a worthwhile step. But here the rate of tax has been provided. Here the rate of tax has been provided. So then we are good to go now. We are good to go now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this question, a good student should not have converted the revenues from South African rands to Kenya shillings automatically. No. Whenever you are given a foreign exchange question like this, you do the cash flows. Do your workings to the level where you are able to get your total cash flows. And once you get your total cash flows, now you convert them to your home currency. Yeah. So don't start in this case here by doing conversions. So many guys lost marks here because they started doing conversions wrongly. So if I'm the one, I mean, this thing is based in South Africa. So we have to know how much are we getting in the form of cash flows in the South African land. All right. So in this case here, then I would want to do a cash flow statement. And to do this cash flow statement, then I will have to do revenue minus costs. So we have here revenue. So we have here revenue. We have here revenue. So our revenue is given here. So our revenue is given here. The first one is 2,600. That is 25. Year 25. Year 25. Year 26. Year 27. Year 28. Year 29. Year 29. Year 29. All right. So this is 2,600. 2,600. 2,600, we have 3,500, 3,500. From there, ladies and gentlemen, we have 5,000, 5,000, we have 5,000, we have 4,200, 4,200, 4,200, and then lastly, we have 2,800. This was a very easy exam, very easy exam. We shall all of us be able to pass the December exams. Yeah, so then from there, we are given variable operating costs are expected to be 20%. So they've given us 20% of the sales and are assumed to accrue evenly. So 20% of the revenues. So variable costs, 20% of 
revenue. So you take like if it is year 2025, you take 20% 20 of 2600. Give me a figure. 20% 20 of 2600. 20% 20 of 2600. Is there somebody who can give me this figure? Yeah, Mary Ann has given me a figure of what year? 520. Ah, only Mary Ann Mugano you. 520. 520. 20% of 3,500? 20% of 3,500? Yeah, 700. 700. 20% of 5,000? 20% of 5,000. 20% of 5,000. Ah, it should be 1,000, right? Should be 1,000. Should be 1,000. And then we have 20% uh, of 4,200. 20% of 4,200, 840, so this is 840, and then lastly we have 20% of 2,800, 20% 20 of 2,800, which gives us what year? 560, thank you very much. Remember this is a deductible, this is a deductible, this is a deductible, this is a deductible, and then we have the fixed costs. Fixed costs, this examiner has given us fixed costs directly. Has given us fixed cost directly. So the fixed cost that we have here, we have six. I'm cutting three zeros. Remember, I'm cutting three zeros. Eh? Fixed cost 600, year one. 26, I can see 780, 905. 780, 905. Then we have 28, 880, 450. We don't have any other cost really. So then are you able to give me these uh, figures? And remember, whatever we'll get here will be my profits because profit is revenue minus cost, revenue minus all the costs. So we have our profit here. And this profit will be PBDT because it's a uh, before we adjust for any depreciations before we adjust for any taxes. The first one is 1480. 2600 minus 520 minus 600, 1480. Uh -huh. Then we have here 3500 at uh, 2020. I'm being given a figure of 2020. So I want to welcome all of you to join our classes, eh? our classes, join our classes, and you can never go wrong. If you want to join our classes, this is our number, any queries number. These are inquiries number 0793 triple five triple zero. Great. So 3095, 3095, 3095, uh -huh. and then year 28, 2480, 2480, and then 29, 70, 70, 90. So please confirm that these figures, all of them are correct. Are they correct? Are they correct? All of them, 1790, yes. Thank you so much, 2480, yes. They are correct, right? They are correct. Okay. Remember, I gave you the format, PPDT, less tax, add depression tax shield. So come and less tax here. Yeah, the way it is, you less tax at 30%. You less tax at 30%. So please give me 30% of these figures, each one of them. 444. Mm -hmm. 30 percent of 2020 six of six six of six 30 percent of 1395 9 so 928.5 mm -hmm. 30% of 2480, 744. Mm -hmm. Then we have 30% uh, of 1790, 30% of 1790, 537. So are these figures correct, all of them? Are they 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 correct all of them? Are they correct all of them? Yes. 
So, and then remember the depletion tax shield we had computed this. It was 300. 300. We had computed this. So, come here and give me, come here and give me my operations. My operations. Cash flows. My operations ca cash flows. Remember to give you this format, right? And then remember, your examiner is very lenient. You can't get a better examiner than Kastner. All these steps is always giving you ticks, 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 ticks. Yeah. So operation of cash flow. So what do we have here? So take this minus this plus. DTS is depreciation tax shield. It's a depreciation tax shield. 1336. First one is 1336. 1336. And then we have 2020 minus 6 or 6 plus 300. What do we have here? 1714. 1714. And then we have here 3095.9 minus 928.5 plus 300. 2466.5. 2466.5. Uh -huh. And then we have 2480 minus 744. Plus 300. Plus 300. 2036. 2036. And then lastly, we have 1790 minus 537 plus 300. Plus 300. Plus 300. 1553. 1553. So remember, these are operations cash flows or operational cash flows. As you operate, ladies and gentlemen, you can't operate. And I normally joke with my young daughters and girls around here that eh, even if today you are walking straight on your high shoes, trust you me, after some time, like when you hit 75, you'll have to bend. Your back will have to bend. That's why when you look at the pension towers, the pension towers are close to KRA there. Yeah, you can see they have got two twins, two twin towers. And of course, in this case, yeah, they are bending. I mean, when you become old, you'll have to bend. You'll have to bend. So in this case, yeah, this project, ladies and gentlemen, we expect it to terminate as well. So in this case, yeah, we expect what we call terminal cash flows. So always we shall add terminal cash flows. So mention here, add terminal cash flows. Terminal cash flows. Terminal cash flows. Yeah, I can see a very good message here. Yeah, somebody boxing me that Mualimu will be young till I die. I think that's what they call 17. 17, being 17 throughout, which is very, very good. But remember for projects, then projects, not people, projects must die. And then when they die, of course, that is termination. Then we expect to get two things. When they die, what do we expect to get? Two things we expect to get when they die. What do we expect to get? When this project come to an end, we expect to receive two things. Their cash inflows. What and what? What and what? Yeah, two things only. The first one will be the scrap value. The scrap value. Because I'll sell the project as a scrap. It's now a scrap. So I expect to get scrap value, which will come at the end of the project, isn't it? Which is zero. In this case here, they have told us it's zero. It is zero. And then we have in this case here, the other thing that we should never forget is the release of working capital. Release. Uh, of working uh, capital. So release of working capital over how much? Release of working capital over how much? Has this been given in the question? Release of what? Because the working capital that you inject into the business, that will be always released back to you. It's like you are lending this money to the project. You are lending this money to the project. It's like you are lending this money to the project. So we are told here, to enable the farm pay land rates and the other working capital requirements, an additional 2,500, I'm reading this as 2,500 because I'm cutting three zeros, will be required. And it is expected that this amount will be recouped in full at the end of the project's useful life. So 2,500 is the working capital that will be received back. So we have here 2,500. So we have here 2,500. We have here 2,500. 2,500. 
And that is it, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That is purely it. So come very first and they give me the total cash flows here. Give me now the total cash flows. Remember scrap value when we were computing our, our NPV, scrap value, our, our depreciation. It's even told, we are even told here, zero salvage value, no salvage value whatsoever. We are told here. All right. So then, ladies and gentlemen, of course, the first year, 1336, we have year 17, 14, nothing to be adjusted. We have year 24, 24, 66.5. 2036. However, this one I need some adjustment. This one you guys have to give me the figure here. You guys must give me the last figure there. You guys must give me the last figure there. Forty fifty three. Forty fifty three. Forty fifty three. It is at this stage that now you remember these are the cash flows you are getting from South Africa. So these cash flows are. Uh, in South Africa runs. They're in South Africa runs. Now you want to bring them back home here for assessment of whether this project is viable or not. So change these cash flows, the total cash flows, change them to the home currency. Change them, 43 last year. Change them to the home currency. Have they given me the exchange rates? Have they given me the exchange rates? So the exchange rates are here. The exchange rates between Kenya shillings and the South African rand are as follows. So remember, we shall start with the this one will be used to convert the initial outlay when the project began. Remember, our cash flows, the ones that you have here, are deemed to accrue at the end of the year. We are actually told here. All the cash flows are expected to occur at the end of the year. Ah, so then I have here 8.59, 8.5. I have nine. Then I have uh, 9.5. I have 9.5. Then I have in this case here 10. Then lastly, we have in this case here 10 point what year? 10.3. Lastly, 10.3. The question is to change these South African rands to Kenya shillings, to change them to Kenya shillings, am I going to multiply these rates with uh, the cash flows given or do I divide? Am I going to multiply or do I divide? Multiply or divide. Am I going to multiply or divide? Uh -huh. Multiply or divide. Multiply or divide. Pata potea. Pata potea. Pata potea. Pata potea. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at this question very well, remember these are nine or rather like 8.5 South African runs to Kenya shillings. These are 8.5. These are 8.5. 8.5. South African rounds equals one Kenya shilling per Kenya shilling. How about how about 1336? How about 1336 South African rounds? All right. How about 1336 South African rounds? How about 1336 South African rounds? That's how you do it. So then this will be 1336 times 1 divided by 8.4 point what year? 8.5. 1336 times 1 divided by 8.5. Because here they are telling us, listen here. Which I believe also this, this must have been a mistake. This must have been a mistake. It, it, it should have been the other way around. It should have been Kenya shillings Kenya shillings per South African rand. It should have been Kenya shillings per South African rand. The exchange rate between the Kenya shillings and the South African rand are as follows. But you see, we don't answer things the way they are in our heads. Eh? We shall be able to answer this the way, the way in this case here, the examiner has written them. When they're written here, South African rands to the Kenya shilling, per Kenya shilling. So it means 8.5. South African runs equals one Kenya shilling. 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 You can see here. You can see here. It is eight point five South African runs equals one Kenya shilling. How about this? Then we should be able to do what you have to divide. 
to divide. But of course, you and I appreciate that uh, the South African rand is stronger. It's, not, it's, it's supposed to be the other way around. 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 So here we are going to do what here? We are going to divide. 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 So when you divide like that, then you should be able to come here and give us what here? Cash flows in Kenya shillings. Cash flows in Kenya shillings. Cash flows in Kenya shillings. So we are dividing here. So can someone divide and give us the answers here? This divided by this. Yeah. Like the first one is 157.18. 157.18, that's the first one. Uh -huh. Take 1714 divided by 9. What are we getting there? 1714 divided by 9. 1714 divided by 9. One ninety point four four. One ninety point four four. One ninety point four four. And then we have 2466.5 divided by 9.5 which gives us 259.63, 259, 259.63, 259.63. And then this is very easy if I divide. This is 20.36, 20 20.36, 20.36. And then lastly, we have 4053 divided by 10.3. 4053 divided by 10.3, which gives us 203 point. Ah, Ah, oh, th th there is no decimal here. Sorry, it's supposed to be two or three point six. You're right. It's supposed to be two or three. It's supposed to be two or three point six. Two or three point six. And then now we have this forty fifty three divided by ten point three, which gives us three ninety three point what year? Three ninety three. Three ninety three point five. Like three ninety three point five. As a gentleman, I would want to bring to your attention something very very important here. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Something very important, very unfortunate, really, very unfortunate. All right. All right. So, Leah, I feel you, but we shall overcome. The semester we shall overcome. That is why I normally say for some of these papers, you need very good coaches. Once you have a very good coach, you have a very good lecture, that is. And then you have access to LMS. You must aim like 90% or 80% or 75%. Because if you aim around the borderline, 50s, and then one question as an issue, automatically, that's why you will get like some lady called me yesterday that Mwalimu, I'm doing this AFM for the sixth time and I'm not stupid. Give me even an exam. I do and you'll be able to see that Mwalimu, I'm okay. What is the problem? Only that I could not show her a few of th these things here and there. But at the end of the day, I know that eh, there is there is something. Let me not explain that uh, too much. There is something. There is something. There is something. But we shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. As you've said, as uh, Stanley has uh, accepted there, we need to move on. We need to move on. But I just wanted to show you something for you to know that... Eh, you know, at times things can happen. You are failing this thing, for example, like thrice, four times, and then you think that, hey, I'm very stupid. No, 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 you aren't. You aren't. You aren't. You aren't. All right. So then we have here cash flows in Kenya shillings. Cash flows in Kenya shillings. So we have here 157.18. We have here 190.44. 190.44. Then we have here 259. 259.63. We have here 203.6. 6. We have here 393.5 like that. So now these are the ones that we shall be able to discount. So come here and give us what we call PVF because these cash flows are what? They're irre irregular. They're irregular. Yeah, yeah, right. So these cash flows are what here? They're irregular. So because they're irregular, so come and uh, take here PVF, 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 PVF at the cost of capital provided. PVF at the cost of capital provided. Mm 
FTV at the cost of capital provided. Sorry. FTV at the cost of capital provided. I just want to get the cost of capital provided. Yeah. So in this case here, the cost of capital provided, we are told the cost of capital for both South Africa and the Kenya is assumed to be 12% per annum. It's assumed to be 12% per annum. So PV at 12%. So PV at 12%. At 12%. So 12%, remember the formula is 1 plus R raised to negative N. So it'll be 1 plus 0 0.12 raised to negative n. So it'll be 1.12 raised to negative 1. 1.12 raised to negative 2. 1.12 raised to negative 3. 1.12 raised to negative 4. 1.12 raised to negative 5. So then this, in this case here, gives us what figure? Somebody here, pretty fast, we move on. Pretty fast, we move on. Eric, I see you are concerned there. Yeah, 0 0.8929. 0.8929. Thank you so much. And then we go to the second one. Uh, so we have 0.7118. 7972. 7972.7972. Thank you so much. 79, 72, thank you so much. Ah, 71, 18. 71, 18. And then we have uh, 63, 55. 63, 55. And then lastly, lastly, 5674, 5674, 5674. Then come here and they give us what we call discounted cash flows. Discounted cash flows. So discounted cash flows, what do we have? We are taking this times this. Discounted cash flows, we are multiplying. Discounted cash flows, we are multiplying. So we have this times this, give me a figure. Discounted cash flows. So we have this times this, give me a figure. Discounted cash flows. Mm -hmm. The first one, according to Stanley, it's 140.35. So 140.35. And then we have here 190.44 times 0 0.7972. 151.82. 151.82. 1 and then we have uh, this times this. Give me a figure. One eighty four point eight one, right? One eighty four point eight one, mm -hmm. and then we have two or three point six times point six three five five. Why they're not giving me answers now? Not giving me answers now. One twenty nine point three four, and then lastly, what do we have there? Lastly, what do we have there? Two twenty three point two seven. Two twenty three point two seven. So these are the discounted cash flows like that, and therefore. What is the total present value? Give me the total present value. Can somebody come and add for us here? Give us the total present value. Are you able to get that total present value? You add everything. You add everything. Give me the total present value. Total present value. Eight twenty nine point five nine. Eight twenty nine. Eight twenty nine. Eight twenty nine point eight twenty nine. 
829.59. Those are, uh, or rather that is the total present value. So then what I would want to do, ladies and gentlemen, is to come and calculate the initial outlay. What is the initial outlay here? I know initial outlay will have two components. Initial outlay will have two components. Initial outlay will have two components. The major ones, the major ones. The major component here will be the initial cost of the machine. Cost of the machine. Cost of the machine, which is 5,000. Remember these are the South African ranks. And then we have the uh, working capital, which will be injected at the beginning and recovered later. So we have here working capital, working capital, which was 2,500, which gives me total 7,500. So these are Zaras. These are Zaras. Convert them to Kenya shillings. So in this case here, in Kenya shillings, in Kenya shillings, in Kenya shillings, I know that this initial outlay, I know the date. I know the date when, when, when this is going to be decarred. I know the date when this is going to be decarred. I know the date when this is going to be decarred because I know here you can see the project will commence on 1st January 2025. So the date is... January 2025, and I know the exchange rate is eight, eight, eight zars per Kenya shilling. Eight zars per Kenya shilling. So then, in this case, if it is eight zars equals one Kenya shilling, how about seven five hundred zars? So this one here. So it will be seventy five hundred times one divided by eight. Seventy five hundred times one divided by eight, which will give me what figures and gentlemen, 937.5, 937.5, 937.5 Kenya shillings. And therefore, and therefore my net present value, and therefore my net present value, and therefore, therefore my net present value, therefore my net present value, my net present value will be Total present value, total present value, less initial outlay, initial outlay, less initial outlay, initial outlay, which is 937.5. So you subtract like that, you will be able to get net present value, which is negative, which is negative, 107.91, 107.91. Negative. And therefore, that means that this project is not viable. This project is not viable. It's not viable. This project is not viable. This project is not viable. I would want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you to RCM College. Of course, if you would want to enjoy these online classes, this is our number 0783 555 000. One paper is going for Kenya shillings 4,800. Very reasonable because we shall be able to give you access to our learning management system. And of course, you'll also get an opportunity of being taught by a CPA ninja. Yeah, myself or AFM. And then of course, you have got all other CPA, CS, CIFA subjects. And don't forget to subscribe to this great YouTube channel. Otherwise, thank you very much. And bye.